Right guys, we're back having a look at the slaughter. Now it's been a while since I've been able to have uh, a look at this. I've had a lot of other work come into the shop and uh, also working my full-time job. Um, this is the arrangement I'm going to have for mounting my rugby table onto the table of the slotting machine. Now it's on a bit of a funny angle I know, but at least it spreads it comfortably over the entire face of the new table. I have also want to make sure that this handle is going to be clear of the handle that I'm going to be using to actuate that y-axis in and out. Just having a look at the handles. My father had a number of these handles tucked away. I think he said they're off an old printing press. But that is almost, well, pretty much identical in shape to the existing handle that adjusts the ram up and down or the position of the stroke for the ram. So that's going to look comparable as far as the era goes. And I'd like to try and keep this machine um, as close to the 1950s as when I believe this was built uh, as I possibly can. So those handles I think will fit the bill quite nicely. All right, the rotary table now, I don't know why Vertex do this, but this collar here, if it was made a millimetre smaller in diameter, you would be able to slide that entire table in without that fouling. So as you can see, that's, that's lifted that up slightly. So what I've had to do to overcome that is I've made up an aluminium spacer to go underneath. That's three millimetres and that lifts it up and that allows that to just clear quite comfortably underneath. Now the other thing I wanted to achieve too was I didn't want to be any worse off on height with this rotary table mounted on the machine. So at the moment from the sliding face to the top of the table is exactly 150 millimetres. Now this is the old table that, uh, that came off the machine, the existing table, so from the underside again to the top plus the thickness of that is exactly 150 millimetres. So I've been able to achieve, achieve that and I can mount my big three jaw chuck in there quite comfortably. I can also mount the three jaw chuck down on the table and I will drill and tap to suit the three jaw chuck onto that. And as I said, I've got to do some drilling and tapping to also suit the table and get that mounted into place. So, so far I'm happy with the way everything is coming up and as I said, I've been able to achieve what I wanted to achieve. Now I've done a couple of jobs on this off camera. It has been absolutely freezing here the last month or so. Um, you know, we go out to the shop and it's two degrees, so I've only been going out for maybe half an hour at a time as far as I can uh, I can handle it with my uh, arthritic hands in the cold. So I haven't done any uh, videoing of the other little small components I've made up, but let's have a quick look at those anyway. All right, let's have a look at the table locks. Now I've changed these around a little bit, particularly for the Y-axis um, table. You might remember I did have a hex on there. Well, I've actually taken that off and I've, uh, I've made up a handle which I reckon would be comparable to what it would look like in the 1950s or what they would have used. And once again, I've also made up a new handle for the new table lock. So it's fairly straightforward. A little offset handle on it and that works really, really well. Now, I was going to use one of these types of new age type locks and these have got the, the ratcheting arrangement on it that you can position the handle wherever you like. But once again, it didn't look comparable to the, the 1950s of when this machine was made. This Y-axis table lock, I've also changed the hand on that. You might remember that was a left hand. Well, I've actually changed it to a right hand, the same as what this one is, and that works really, really well. So I'm happy with that locking arrangement here that's come up. The other job I've done on the side is I've made up the, uh, the new um, gib adjusting screws. So we'll pull one of those out and we'll have a look at what that arrangement looks like. Dropping everything, it is still very cold out here. It was uh, two degrees when I came out this morning and it hasn't warmed up much since. All right. So that's the actual adjusting nut, if you like, or stud. So uh, that's just machined up a bit of high tensile, N10, all thread, and I've just cut a slit with a slitting saw. 
for the screwdriver head. Now up inside there, I've got the actual engagement screw, uh, engagement shaft I guess you might call it. So I've drilled and tapped that M3 in the end of that so that makes it easy to withdraw out. I've also cut a taper on the end which matches the 55 degree angle of the gib. And I've also cut a little slot in the end of that so that I know which orientation to put that into. So I just have the slot to the top. That gets pushed in. And my adjuster goes in. And I can set the tension on that quite comfortably. Well, the other thing I've done too is I've made up the keys that are supporting or, or uh, locating that gib in place. So I'll just bring the camera out at a different angle and let's have a quick look at that. Right, so these keys are quite a neat fit in there. Just get them out. Once again, I've just got a little withdrawal thread up inside there. Excuse my hands, please. And that's that key. And it's quite a neat fit inside there. That's actually a, a very neat hand fit. So that locates that gib in there quite neatly and it works extremely well. So it allows the gib to move in and out but not up and down nor in and out this way. So that's worked out very very nice. Oops. It's very cold, my hands are very very cold at the moment, it's freezing in here. Right. So that's where things are at at the moment. This afternoon I'm going to duck down to my mate Nathan's house and uh, we're going to blast those hand wheels and we're going to do the modifications so that I can get them to fit onto the, uh, onto the lead screws of the X and Y axis on this machine. But so far I'm very happy I've been able to achieve everything I wanted to achieve out of it. Well guys, we'll see you back uh, when we're getting these handles sorted out. All right, I've changed the um, arrangement slightly. I've um, brought this rotary table around to the other side. Uh, that clears the handles quite nicely. Um, that handle that's on the rotary table was going to fail with the, uh, the table lock down here. We are clear of the cable lock at this point here. As you can see, I've just got the uh, hand wheel sitting in there loosely at the moment. So I'll make up some spaces just to space these out a little bit further. I will cut the shaft back shorter and cut a new keyway. These have got square drives on them. So I'll bore them out and uh, fit a plug in there so that I can um, drill and key that on both sides. And we'll drill and tap into the end of the shaft. And I can then use shims to uh, space that around to remove as much of the backlash as I can off the uh, off the hand wheels. So I think that'll work quite nicely. As you can see I've got my tool pallet up here so this is going to be quite a big working area for the slotting machine. When I put this on I probably lost about 20 millimeters of height compared to where it was previously but given the fact that I can bring the tool right up by the adjustment here, I think I'll be fine. So the hand wheels, I've just zinc coated those, a bit of cold gal on there just to stop the uh, them flashing off with rust. 
I am going to look at trying to machine this OD here to get that nice and smooth. It's quite pitted with rust. So we'll get that tidied up. I want to make it similar to what we've got up there. All right, this bearing support here that did support a set of gears when it uh, did that actuating mechanism that I showed you very, very early on, I'm going to cut that back off flush. And then we can reuse this, uh, this bearing arrangement here. As I said, we'll try and keep it to original as we possibly can and reuse as much of the original gear as we possibly can. I do have a little issue down here that I need to deal with. You can see there's a dowel hole down there. Well, that dowel has pushed up inside the casting here. So uh, I want to try and get that out. So I've got a, diff a couple of different methods. I have a plan A, plan B and a plan C to try and get that out because it's almost flush. So I can't get onto it with anything. But we might try and tackle that first and get that sorted out. And we'll come back and look at the machining for the... Uh, for the hand wheels and the lead screw shafts. But so far I reckon it looks quite nice. It's quite good. That's probably as far to the left as I want to go. I can take that handle off quite easily if there's going to be a foul position here, but I doubt it. At the moment I'm about 80 millimeters off center, which is going to be a very, well, probably never ever going to happen. All right, let's have a look at this little issue with the dowel first. We're going to try and get that out. Then we can look at machining up the spaces, cutting the, uh, the shafts back, cutting them, and then drilling and tapping them. And then putting some new hubs into the hand wheels. But I reckon those hand wheels are certainly going to look the part. And I wouldn't want to go much smaller in diameter on those hand wheels because it's nice to have a bit of a feel as you're indexing in a couple of thou at a time for the cut and smaller hand wheels make that a little bit more difficult all right let's strip it down and we'll have a look at this little issue with the dowel and we'll try and get that sorted out so you can see how that's uh, pretty flush with the casting um, these are quite soft on the end often they're not soft on the end you've got to cut them off but they are soft uh, plan B will be is I'll try and drill and get a tap up inside there without that thing turning and then we can just get a um, small M3 so I've got to get a cap screw and then try and draw it out that way. But what I'll do first of all is apply some super glue onto there and let that sit for a few hours to go off and we'll try and draw it out. Now I just get cheap super glue from, um, from my local supermarket and this stuff works really, really well. for a couple of hours let's let that go off we'll just try and draw it out if that doesn't work we'll go for the drill and tap but i'll be interested to see if this is going to work we'll give it a go anyway all right we'll see in a, an hour or so and we'll see how it's looking all right it's been a few hours now since i've uh, glued this into place and now it's time to see if we can remove it I'm just going to sit a pair of these jaws into place very carefully. I want to get them as close as I can. All right. Now, hopefully, I can do this without getting my hands in the way too much. Now, I know super glue is okay in tension, it's no good in torque. So, we're just going to very gently see how we go. And look at that, out it comes. Oh! <laughs> All right. We have that more than enough to be able to extract that now. Well, 
wiping that off. All right. Well, that was worth it, wasn't it? There it is. One dowel out. When I put this dowel back in again, I am going to drill and tap into the end of it so that uh, I can extract that much, much easier next time. All right, done. Thank you.